Morning guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. And what I thought we'd do today is take a look at a piece of Icelandic spar, also known as the Viking Sunstone. And I've done a lot of research over the last couple of years, really, on the Viking Sunstone and how people speculated that it may have been used because it was really never written down exactly how it was used, other than generally they might have had multiples of these in boats so they could triangulate the position of the sun and really that's not to find a southern bearing although we know the sun travels in a southern arc in the northern hemisphere but if you understand the angle of the sun and the time of day or how many hours the sun's been above the horizon it gives you a much better general direction or bearing once you find or determine the location of the sun and this crystal was used to find that sun during overcast conditions and today we have fairly overcast conditions so I want to show you what I feel is the proper way to use this sunstone and really a piece of Icelandic spar is nothing more than a crystal for lack of a better word and you can get this type of calcite crystal other places besides just Iceland although that's where they speculated most of them came from that the Vikings used obviously but what I've done is I've taken and I've put a black dot with a marker on this crystal, on the front side. So on the long side, I've got it on the short side here. So you've got a long side, a short side. And what happens with these crystals is they refract light. So they kind of are prismatic. They put colored light in there. So when you cup this in your hand and you look at it on the horizon or just above the horizon, what happens is because of light entering here, you get an image from the back side looking through it like a telescope in your hand of two dots, one of them being purple and one of them being black or the color of the dot that you put on the front side. And from what I see using this thing and experimenting with it, what happens is as you move this across the horizon, and I don't mean up in the air, I mean across the horizon, you see two dots. And once you get to the point where you're directly below the sun, you get a very purple prismatic light that comes through here and pretty much obliterates the purple circle and only shows the black. And then you're pretty much directly in line or below the sun. And I've experimented with this several times, even on overcast days and even on some sunny days, just to see how it worked. But today we have a pretty overcast day. So I want to show you, I shot some footage earlier that was at about nine o'clock. Now it's about 1030. So the sun's moved quite high in the sky. And if I know about how many hours the sun's been up. So let's say in my location, the sun rises at about seven o'clock. And I know it's been approximately three hours or so since the sun rose. Then I can speculate or I can theorize that with the sun moving 15 degrees every hour, at 10 o'clock it's moved 45 degrees from east, rising in the east and setting in the west. So 45 degrees off of that is going to be a southeasterly bearing. So let's look at that and I'll see if I can get some footage inside this thing as I'm holding it up so you can see that dot disappear and turn to one solid black dot. And then maybe you'll understand a little bit more about what I'm talking about. Stay with me. trying to follow this with my hand so you can see it. But on this one, you've got a green dot and you've got a purple dot, depending on how you're looking at it and depending on the light that's refracting in there. But what happens is whatever color that second dot is, it'll disappear and you're only gonna see the one dot because the other one's gonna be obliterated by the refraction in the sun, which is right there. So if we come straight down from that, you can see how that refraction obliterates everything but the one dot. But that doesn't happen over here. You can still see two dots in the crystal, and I hope you guys can see that. 
with the naked eye, you can definitely see two dots in the crystal, even right here. Where you've got some green light in there, you can still see two dots in the circle. Or inside the crystal, excuse me. Okay, guys, I apologize if you couldn't see very well inside this crystal when I was trying to hold it up in front of me. It's a little difficult to hold the camera at the right angle and hold the crystal at the right angle at the same time. But I wanted to shoot a little bit of a vlog today to kind of show you how that works. At least that's how I theorize that it works. And I've, like I said, I've tried it several times. And really, you have different colors of light that come through that prism, just like a normal prism that you had when you experimented with science in school. And one dot will be one color, and the other dot will be a very dark color. And that's the one that you drew on the front side is that darker colored dot. And what you're trying to do is effectively move the crystal until the color saturation within that crystal from the prismatic effect of that crystal obliterates the secondary dot and you can only see the one that you drew on there. That will tell you that you're directly below the sun on the horizon line. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends, and I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.